Welcome to our lecture online and in this video we're going to take a look at the pi bond. So what is a pi bond? Well let's go back to the sigma bond. The sigma bond is where there's atoms that are bonding together. They have s or p orbitals that have just a single electron in them and so they can overlap and then share that overlap space with each electron from each atom sharing that space forming a negative region. With a pi bond, you have a different situation. And so the best way to illustrate that, we're going to take a look at the ethylene molecule. The ethylene molecule is C2H4, two carbons and two hydrogens on each carbon like that. From the Lewis perspective, you will need a double bond between the carbons because otherwise you would not have all four of the valence electrons involved in bonding. If you ignore this, if you take this away, so now you can see that you have a single bond with hydrogen, single bond with hydrogen here, single bond between the carbons, but that would mean that each carbon would have one additional free electron sitting there, and of course, free electrons only exist in pairs. Since there's only one, the tendency is for those to form a bond as well. And traditionally, we think of it as a double bond, and how we usually think about a double bond, I have a little illustration that, I, that here. Here's the, um, the ethylene molecule, two carbons, they each have two hydrogens, and then to form the bond between the two carbons, we think of it as a double bond like that. But that's not exactly the way the double bond works, because what happens is that there's one sigma bond that, for, that forms first with one of the available uh, p orbitals from each side. So we have the, the orbital overlapping, the two electrons sharing. Of course, there's a slightly different mechanism at play there, which I'm ignoring at this moment. We'll see that in a future video, but think of it as two p orbitals overlapping sharing the two electrons like that and forming what we would call a sigma bond. But then we still have these two other p orbitals which are oriented in a different direction. They each still have an electron in them, so there's an electron in this orbital and an electron in this orbital, so of course it's, let's assume that would be like the pz orbital in the z-axis, and they will not want to stay there like that, that's not a stable situation. So what happens is that these lobes will bend towards each other and start sharing space. So what happens then is that these lobes will bend towards one another and you form a lobe above the molecule like that. And then these will join together and they form a lobe below the molecule like that. So they're physically situated above and below so that this electron can freely share in here and freely share in here. And this is basically part of the same structure. So both of these lobes right here are part of the single P bond, or I'm sorry, pi bond as we, I should call it, not P bond, um, but pi bond. So this is known as the pi bond structure. And it does contain now two electrons. And this bond is not as strong as the valence bond, but nevertheless, it's a better situation than having these two free electrons to sit in there by themselves, not forming that second bond. So that's called a pi bond, and it's physically made by the two lobes bending over, sharing this space like that, so the, t the two electrons can then form a region that runs along like that. The best way to think about it, in a way, is think of this as being a planar molecule like that. Now let's think about these two gray bend regions as the pi bond and then of course I need another bond in here to represent the valence bond which I can then put right in between like that. So if you think of this as the valence bond being made by the uh, two sets of p orbitals and then the other two sets of p orbitals from the two atoms bending over coming together and form the pi bond. So that's the best way to think about it. And indeed in this case since it's a planar molecule you'd see that the pi bond would be above and below the plane of that particular molecule. And there's the best way to look at a pi bond.